Blog Talk Radio. What's going on, guys? This is Ringside Spotlight, Episode 1, with special guest, WWE Tough Enough contestant, Martin Casals. What's going on, guys? My name is Jonathan Flagg, the host of Mr. WWE Report on YouTube.com and Ringside Spotlight here on Blog Talk Radio. And we are joined by Martin Casaus. Martin, how are you doing? I'm doing fantastic. How are you guys doing? Pretty good, pretty good. So uh, to start off the show, uh, if you don't mind, let's uh, take a quick look at your notes. You are a four-time UCW Tag Team Champion, the first-time UCW Ultra X Champion, and I believe the ACW Midwest Champion. That's right, yeah. Uh, I've won a few other belts since then. won the Las Vegas Championship from Adrenaline Unleashed, which I'm actually literally driving 100 miles an hour. Well, let me speed up a little bit. Right now, driving down to Vegas, uh, I was a... Las Vegas champion as well for Again and Unleashed. I won a few other titles as well. Uh, so it's been a good run thus far. Sounds good. So by, and so by the way, if it hangs up on you, I'm going to call you right back just in case my phone disconnects and we go around a weird turn or something. I'm literally driving right. 100 miles right now. All right, no problem. Fantastic. And, uh, well, in uh, 2008, you were sent to FCW for a tryout, is that correct? It was, yeah, back in 2007, yes. Um, and you made your Tough Enough uh, audition. How did that come to be, actually? Uh, believe it or not, Facebook. Um, one of the WWE Tough Enough producers contacted me via Facebook saying, hey, you're on the WWE radar and they would like you to put in your information. And uh, actually ignored it for the first couple of days, day or so, and then figured out, well, what if, what if this guy is actually from a tough enough, and then I don't reply back, and then I have to sit there and watch the show and wonder if it actually was. So I contacted him back, and it turned out he was legit, and sent in my stuff, went through a million hours of tests and interviews, and there it goes, the rest is history. Um, well, since you are currently a wrestler, how did wrestling come into your life? Uh, do you remember how you started watching? Uh, how I started actually wrestling or when I started liking, liking wrestling? Uh, when you started liking wrestling. When I started liking wrestling. I was a little kid. I'm not sure how, uh, I was a little bit older than everybody else, but I was a little bit younger. I was at my grandpa's house and I watched. It was the NWO beat up somebody. I don't know who it was, but I was so pissed because there was like four of them beating on one dude. I think it was like DDP, Diamond Dallas Page or something. I don't remember, but I just remember like four guys beating it, beat him up, and he was trying to fight back really hard, and it just pissed me off royally. So I was like, what is this show? I need to I want to do something about this. Anyway, um, but then I actually started watching it on my own uh, during the Monday Night Wars, and... Uh, that's when it almost kind of hit. My actual first match that I remember, actual match, was actually in the, when they were in Salt Lake City because I was so ticked off that I, that I did not go to the actual live event. And it, the first match I remember is actually the first match of Bill Goldberg's streak in Salt Lake City. Nice. Bill, yep. And it was, uh, Bill uh, Hugh Ward was actually the guy who uh, started the streak, so it's an odd <laughs> turn of events. And uh, as I mentioned in the notes, you are a uh, UCW Tag Team Champion. Well, how did you get into that industry, and uh, how did it feel to become champion? Uh, well, I went to, my friend had an extra ticket to the WWE show, 
Um, I was really into sports, so I really didn't have a lot of time on my hands when I was in school. So uh, my friend had an extra ticket to a WWE show. Uh, he, she took me there, and one of the local wrestlers gave me a flyer, and uh, it was for his local wrestling show in the wrestling school. Uh, I put it in my pocket. actually never ended up going to the show. And then uh, when I cleaned my room a couple months later, I went and found out. I just found the flyer again and gave it a call. I was like, oh, no way. I totally forgot about this. Sounds good. Oh. Oh. And that's how it all started is me going to a WWE show, and someone just good advertising by the local school and promotion, which now I'm a co owner of. Yeah. And, uh, well, this next question is uh, kind of odd. In your audition to get on Tough Enough, uh, I noticed that you uh, have a toy room. Uh, do you still collect WWE or uh, any wrestling company action figures? I never really got into the toys and things. Like, every once in a while, my friends will buy me the belts. Uh, I never really got into that. If anything, I'll get shirts. I never really got into the toys. My toy room, that toy room is actually stuff when I was way younger. Again, I didn't get into wrestling until the Monday Night War is the late 90s. So uh, I was a little bit past my uh, my toy, act, my figure, my action figure eight, uh, days. So those are like my Power Rangers, my Ninja Turtles. I still have them, and I won't give them up. My girlfriend's going <laughs> to make me throw them away, but I won't do it. Um, but, yeah, I still have those. I actually just cleaned out that whole toy room and kept most of those toys, but... Really, all the adults got to get my toys, but I didn't really get into the action figures of wrestling. I have a few now that's flying over my bed, so I have the little baby right. ones. You know, like the, the size of your pinky ones, the little baby one. I got a little ring and a bunch of little guys like Shawn Michaels and John Cena. Got a couple of those uh, above my bed now, currently. So, eh, well, it's, who, who says anything about that? That's still all right, man. Yeah, yeah I'm never gonna grow up. <laughs> All right, so uh, so now the fans have no idea about Tough Enough, and uh, it's announced, uh, I believe, sometime uh, February 2011, I believe. And uh, so something happened where the uh, contestants were revealed. Um, so April 4th, 2011, you were introduced on TV for a split second, and... Uh, what were your thoughts on the live crowd? See, I've been in front of a lot of live crowds before, but there's nothing like walking out on the stage on Monday Night Raw. That was my first time I've ever had the ability to do that. I've been backstage a bunch of times. I've been in the WWE ring a few, several times more. Uh, i just never been there when the cameras are on and the WWE Monday Night Raw live crowd is there. That is an experience. That I, I'm proud to say that I've been able to have multiple times uh, because of the finale as well. And uh, yeah. that is really, that was worth all the things and the breaks and the hurts and the years in the gym and training in the ring. That's definitely worth it. That is, the crowd is amazing. Uh, they didn't know quite know who, who was the good guy, who's the bad guy, who's the jerk, who's cool, I mean, anything about tough enough, but they just knew these guys were fighting for something. And uh, that that crowd is amazing. Just looking up, you should, you'll see me looking her up most of the time I'm out there, just because there's people all the way up in the rafters. They know me. Yeah, it looks, I, so it's amazing to see yeah, how many people. It's Fifteen thousand people. Yeah, it's crazy. It looked amazing, and uh, uh, the Miz actually came out uh, after all of you guys announced uh, yourself and introduced yourself. Uh, did you know the Miz was coming out? Uh, what were you expecting, and uh, what were your thoughts? Uh, well, the Miz was coming out. Uh, obviously, we were there for Tough Enough. Uh, obviously, you know he, if he's going to be out there, he's not going to leave. He's going to be talking about himself. So, um, Yeah. He, I was out there. My main concern was Stone Cold Steve Austin. That's why I was out there, where, where out there promoting Tough Enough. So uh, I wasn't worried too much because when you got the rattlesnake in the ring with you, you're going to be all right. So, uh, yeah, I was really at that time was when I – we'd already filmed Tough Enough. 
to my ankle I was already fractured at that time. So I was more worried about if they uh, got into it, getting out of the way, letting Stone Cold Steve Austin take care of the business. I would love to jump in there, but there's not much I could have done with the one leg. Yeah. Uh, 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 well, tough enough. Uh, the first episode, I don't recall exactly what it was, but uh, what was your favorite competition? I believe in episode two and three, or three and four is when you first started dominating, and which was very impressive. Well, thank you. I, I like to take pride in what I do in the ring, and uh, it's really, I, I love the technical style of wrestling. I love making everything I do in that ring count. So, uh, it took a second, though. So that's what happened to me in the trial. In 2007, I had a tryout there at FCW, and I was very yes, ma'am, keep my head up, and uh, not make much noise, and I think that was a major downfall for me. And I think I had a little bit of that, too, going into Tough Enough. Uh, but I know how to wrestle, and that's what I'm good at. So once I got a little bit of my confidence back, I'm like, all right, this, I know my place. I know exactly what I need to do here. I know what I'm doing in the ring. So that's, yeah, that's really where I like to stand out. I don't need to be talking a lot in order to get myself over. I like to talk in the ring. Yeah. Uh, in future episodes, uh, WWE superstars appeared on the show to help you guys, such as John Cena, uh, Rey Mysterio, and Bret Hart. Uh, also, did you know they were coming, and what were your thoughts? Uh, we didn't know who was going to be there. We kind of, once we kind of been there for a little bit, we kind of knew every week there was going to be somebody. We kind of knew somebody was going to show up. We didn't know when or who was going to be. But, uh, so we learned when you guys learned. Uh... It, it, was, it was amazing meeting everybody. I've re- met a lot of those guys previously. Bret Hart, one of my favorites. I've met him several times before. And it's always good to hear that he sat there and talked for a good hour uh, with us. And they only they cut that down to, what, like five minutes on the show? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, and it's, meeting these, these kind of people that have that done so much for this business is 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 an amazing once in a lifetime experience, which I'm lucky enough to have experienced more than once. Uh, yeah, very good. Um, who out of all the tough enough contestants? I know when you first got on, you guys weren't allowed to talk to each other because uh, apparently they thought something would get out. I believe, but um, when you guys were able to finally interact with each other. Uh, who was, uh, let's say, uh, your favorite friend to be around? I wouldn't maybe say a friend, but a uh, favorite guy to 